and he by friar's lantern led tells how the drudging goblin sweat to earn his cream bowl duly set when in one night ere glimpse of morn his shadowy flail hath threshed the corn that ten day labors could not end then lies him down the lubber fiend and stretched out all the chimneys length basks at the fire his hairy strength and crop full of doors he flings ere the first cock his matin rings thus done the tales to bed they creep by whispering winds soon lulled asleep towered cities please us then and the busy hum of men where throngs of knights and barons bold in weeds of peace high triumphs hold with store of ladies whose bright eyes rain influence and judge the prize of wit or arms while both contend to win her grace whom all commend in saffron robe with taper clear and pomp and feast and revelry with mask and antique pageantry such sights as youthful poets dream on summer eves by haunted stream then to the well-trod stage anon if Johnson's learned sock be on, or sweetest Shakespeare fancy's child, warble his native wood tones wild, and ever against eating cares lap me in soft Lydian airs. Married to immortal verse, such as the meeting soul may pierce in notes with many a winding bout of linked sweetness long drawn out with wanton heed and giddy cunning the melting voice though mazes running untwisting all the chains that tie the hidden soul of harmony that orpheus self may heave his head from golden slumber on a bed of heaped Elysian flowers, and hear such strains as would have won the ear of Pluto to have quite set free his half-regained Eurycides. These delights, if thou canst give, mirth with thee i mean to live